So, gentlemen, I have gathered you here to discuss my very obvious and evil plan to blackmail the governments of the world into handing over one billion pounds in gold. Terry's all gold. Should we not use dollars? Okay, okay. One billion pounds worth of Collars. No, not collars. Doll. Oh, never mind. If they refuse, then we will. What's this? We don't have any candles. We have been discovered. Destroy this equipment at once. That's not good enough. If I'm not mistaken, and I often am, that's an ESP32 camera. It can transmit video over the internet. They already know whoever they are. Abandon secret unsecured base. Me first. Get out of the way, Olaf, you idiot. So after that questionable intro and possibly even more questionable acting, what are we looking at today? We're looking at ESP32 camera modules. So these have a small camera on them and an ESP32 built in, all into one simple board. What we'll need to get this to work, you'll need the camera module itself and one of these little serial to USB programmers, FTDI programmers. Because if you look, there's no USB connection on here, there's no USB chip. So, so this handles all that for you. All you need to do is connect some of the pins of this to some of the pins of that, and then you connect your USB this one has all those mini USB connectors. I think you can get them with the uh, micro as well. You connect that up, connect that to your Arduino environment, to your computer, and the Arduino environment will see it just like a normal ESP32. Dead easy. So let's have a quick demo of this. Oh, before we do, we've still got covering on the lens. Let's do the unpeel. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 can't do it, it's too tiny. And also, it's too small to really do this sexy reveal peel. But there we go, that's that gone. So, let's have a look at this in action. So, sorry if the audio's not up to a brilliant standard. Where the actual camera is set uh, is positioned and the computer are a reasonable distance apart. So, I'm moving between the computer and this area where I'm doing the filming of the character. And so the, the audio might just fluctuate a little bit in quality. Apologise for that. I'll try and even it out in post. Right then, so it's set up with the software that I've not shown yet, but it's all loaded up on the board, ready to go. So you don't need this board on here. It's only needed for programming. I've just whacked it on because of the convenience of being able to just tap into the power quickly via the USB, via this board. You can power this board directly from this positive and negative uh, for five volts, or you can actually power it on a slightly different pin on 3.3 volts. All are very clearly labeled on the board. So coming to your browser, this camera is broadcasting on a particular IP address on your local LAN. So, and it is 192.168.1.117. So if we put that in, and this is the SP32 that is generating this screen. It's basically feed it back as a web page. If you want to see what's on the actual camera, come down to the bottom. We can get a still if we wanted to, or we can start the stream. And it's started. It's currently set for 640 by 480. And you might notice there's a little bit of lag with that, but the quality is quite reasonable. So oh, there he is, a little Minecraft Lego figure. So if you look, I'll move my finger, so I'll say now when I move it, and also you'll probably see it on the picture in picture I've got of this area as well, that now, 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 now. So there's really about, I don't know, 0.3 to 0.5 delay in the movement of the finger to what the camera's recording. If you want that to improve, you can reduce your resolution down to about 320 by 240, and that will give almost no lag, it's almost imperceivable lag. Maybe 0.1 of a second, something like that, but certainly I don't notice it too much at all, intents and purposes. 
that's almost virtually real time, no lag. For me anyway, you might see it slightly different. So we could go, go all the way up to various resolutions. I'm not sure what the technical resolution of this camera is. I doubt it's up to 1600 by 1200, could be, I've not looked. Uh, I'll put it on screen now what the actual resolution of this particular camera is. As mentioned earlier, the both of this equipment, it's all available uh, on affiliate links down below. So we'll set it to 1280 and we'll see how that affects performance. And you'll see it affect it quite badly. We're a little bit near there, so a little bit of fuzz just around the character. Uh, the focal distance will be in the specs as well, but I think it's probably around 10, 15 centimeters, something like that. Seems reasonably well focused there. It'll be fixed focus. Um, so let's have a look. Oops, can you see there's quite a lag. So he fell over there and there's quite a delay before I actually showed it on the SP feed. So if I move my finger, so now, 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 it's probably less than a second, but it's certainly getting up there. So that's something to consider. If you want the extra quality, you are going to get some lag. Let's just bring that back down to something around in between where I've got a slight bit of lag, but we've also got a reasonable quality picture. And I've got some lighting on here, but it, it is quite rubbish lighting. My light in this room is not brilliant where this is being shot. Um, but even then, it's, it, the quality is really quite, I think it's brilliant. I mean, your opinion might vary, but you know, let's remember that mine's right. It really is, I think, for what you're paying, and all built onto a little board like this, it could hide, whatever. So all the other things we can do, we've got some special effects. As I said, this is all software that's been written and they've put a massive and an amazing effort into it. Um, so, negative? Yeah, very, very Doctor Who from the 80s. Or 70s even. Uh, grayscale, you can see, you don't need to just go from, or we could go back to the 1890s and have a bit of sepia in there and go all like old fashioned, yeah. You just put like the bowler hat on this guy, don't I? And there's lots of other sensors. One of the interesting things you can do, which I'm not going to uh, demo today, but you can do face detection and face recognition. You may wonder what the difference is. Face detection is where it will just detect a face. Face recognition is where you can actually work out whose that face is. So if you want to put on like a, well, we're getting up to that time of year for Santa, aren't we? We'd maybe do a Santa cam and detect when Santa's in the room. But yeah, you can see there's a little button that says enroll face here. And I've not tested this, I've not looked into it any further, I've just seen the options. Imagine you put detection and recognition on and you'll be able to save a face and then hopefully be able to recognise in the future and some sort of flag. So we need to look at the wiring for this, which is very, very simple. Let's move on to the wiring and then we'll demo the libraries. As you can see, I've wired this up. I'll just go through the connections. Uh, this little guy can just go and observe from over there. So, power and ground, straightforward, going to the 5 volts, the 5 volts of the ESP32 board and the ground, going to the power VCC of this board. Now, there is a small jumper here, which you can change, you can pull that jumper off, put it on either that side of those two prongs or that side of those two prongs. If it's on this side, then you're supplying it with five volts. If you put it to that side, to this side, then you'd be supplying it with three volts. So it's very important to select however you're powering your board. I'm supplying five volts, so I've got it on the five volt side from the five volts on this board here. The other two connections are just the serial connections. So we've got the transmit connection of this board which is the one, two, third pin up from this side, transmit TX, and it's on the blue wire, and that's going to the receive connection of this board, which is the one, two, third pin up on there, and it has something like, on this board, it's labelled as UNR for receive, and so the white one is going from the RX connection, which is the second one up, one, two, and that goes to the second one up on this board as well. And that's labelled as U0T on this board, transmit. The only other connection of note is you must connect I0T, IOT, not IOT, sorry, you must connect I, IO0, which is the third pin down from the top, one, two, three, on this side, so look at the camera at the top there, one, two, three, that, if you look, you just loop round, it's coming right next to it because that's a ground connection. 
So this third pin down, IO0, must be connected to ground only for when you're programming the device connected to your, to your PC, whatever, with your Arduino IDE. When you want to use it as a camera after programming, it must be disconnected, else it will not work. So let's have a look what we need software-wise to drive it. Well, you might wonder what libraries we need. Well, you don't need to install any additional libraries. When you install the SB32 files for working with the Arduino IDE, you get this as default. You get the camera library pre-installed as default. If you don't see it where I'm about to look, then make sure you're fully up to date with your SP32 board manager. So we'll go to tools. And first of all, we need to select the right board. So you might have in there having their Nano or ESP32 do it or whatever it might be. So you need to come across here, go to ESP32 Arduino and look for the AI Thinker ESP32 CAM board, which is the one that I'm using and the one that's linked below. And you can see it's there. So if you don't see it in here, as I said, you probably need to make sure your Arduino IDE stroke ESP32 boards are fully up to date. So presume you've got that set, check your port. Yeah, because I've plugged this in, so it's appearing on COM port 7. And then your example is in examples. And come down here. And it's in ESP32, cross and see camera. Just the one example, camera web server. So we'll select that. Move that into view a bit better. And that's it. That's your example. Now, with this board, it is not the camera rover kit. It is, as you saw, the AI Thinker one. You might have bought a different one. If you want to follow my example, as I said, use the link below. That will take you to the same board that I bought. So what I need to do is to come and take that one then and comment in or bring in this one. This is the one that I've got. This is my board. And then the only other thing you need to do is, whoops, I pull that back over there sorry about that only thing you need to do then is to put in your actual SSID for your local Wi-Fi in your property and obviously your Wi-Fi uh, password there and then this usual thing of click upload and upload now before we do that we need to check our board wiring don't we we've seen it I've wired it up the way to check this is just go to tools and serial monitor and then press reset on the actual SP32 board. There is a tiny reset button. And I'm just leaning over, so the, the, the quality, the mic might have just drifted down there as I'm leaning over out of the way just to press my reset button. So when I press that now, and you can see it says waiting for download. This is part of the bootloader on this board. When you've got that pin IO0 connected to ground, it's, it knows that's what's happening. It's waiting for a new code. It's not doing any camera functions you should get this message. If you don't get it, check your wiring, check you've connected that IO0 to, input output 0 to ground. And remember, once we've uploaded, we're going to undo that ground. So presuming that's all there and it's waiting, that's great. So all we need to do now is to upload, which I've already done on that board, as you know. So what I'm gonna do now is just show you what appears on the serial port when we actually power up the camera. So what I'm doing now, I'm just going to unplug IO0 from the ground. So it's now acting as a camera, it would have taken upload. Uh, but if you don't unplug that and you try and use it as a camera, yep, yeah, it's not going to respond on that IP address. So let's reset the board and see what additional information that serial monitor we get. So I'm resetting now. Now we've got a full, full dot, so it's booting up. So that was just what well, the Wi-Fi was trying to connect. Starting the web sort and port 80, and you can see the camera is ready to use, and it tells you the port, the IP address that you need to connect to. Yours may be different than what you see here, so you need to make sure your serial port's connected. Okay, so to power this, as I said, you've got two options. You can power it from a five volt source or a 3.3 volt source. It has an onboard regulator for you powering it from the five volt source, so, which is what I'm going to do. And one of the easiest way you might want to do it, perhaps, I mean, you could just connect this into any sort of like five volts, six volts, seven volts, will be fine as long as you're going through the regulator. I'm gonna connect it up to this power bank with just a normal USB cable, which I've actually cut off at this end. 
because obviously we've got no sort of USB entry point on there. And I've exposed the four wires of this USB lead. Red is positive, black is negative, the green and the white are the data. And you can see I've connected red to this end and black to this end. So I'm just going to connect the VCC onto there and the ground onto there. And then I'm just going to plug my power bank in. Well, if I get the right way up, I will. And that should be now running. So it has to take, it takes it a couple of seconds or so, a few seconds just to connect up to the internet. So we'll just get our shot ready with our little character. Uh, let's do a quick refresh of, oh, do we need to refresh? Probably. I'll do a refresh anyway, see it's been on and off. And then we'll go start stream. And yep, that, oh, and we're upside down. So I'll probably want to rotate that a little bit. I'm just wait down maybe with the power bank. It's just gonna, ah, oh, that's there, steady, steady. Okay, so there it is, and you see, as I said, it's very, at 320 by 240, you might think the quality is low, but you get a good FPS, get a good frames per second on it, so that's fine. And yeah, scary Minecraft character. Mm. Um, yeah, whatever, okay, um, maybe no more of that. So yeah, that is it. This project has so many, these things have so many uses. It, it, it's just flabbergasting. And for the money, in fact, my flabber has never been so gasted. For the money, they're absolutely amazing. So although there's only one demo on there, the webcam demo, I know that uh, that should be good enough to get you going on this. But you can do a lot more with it, with the actual routines and functions that are available. Too much score for this video. So that's it for now. Over the next... 12 months or so, I'm going to be going back and revisiting this project and doing um, ooh, and doing other things with it. So it feels good to get back in the saddle. I've had so much real life work on, so much so that I've actually suspended, I did actually suspend Patreon payments for two months so that people weren't paying anything towards my channel at all on Patreon. So it wasn't fair while I wasn't producing videos. So my Patreon feed is going to be turned, well not feed, but my Patreon subs are going to be turned back on. So I think over the next month I'm probably going to get my normal sort of quantity of videos out. Didn't feel right for my Patreons to be paying every month when I wasn't producing the content or even working in the background on content. It's one thing not to produce but you're working on things. But my real life work was so busy that it was just impossible. So I suspended payments. But anyway, they're back on. So if you want to join the Patreon, have a go. If not, just patronise me in the comments. Uh, thanks very much for those that are clicking like on the videos. It really helps. If you're sharing them, that's brilliant too. If you're not, you're new here and you think, yeah, maybe I'll watch a bit more of this. If it could be okay, then, you know, hit the subscribe button. Or at least press it very gently so you don't break your computer or anything. But for now, to all of you, thank you very much for watching. Till next time.